After their comeback fell short on Tuesday night, the Cardinals get a hell of a start from one Miles Michaelis and avoid the sweep in Houston. Plus, we're going to talk about some trade speculation once again on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. And uh, I, I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. That way you're interacting with us. And hit the notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans of baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, so let's recap real quick. All right, let's recap. Let's go back to Tuesday night. Cardinals got out slugged by the Astros 8-5. to five. Andre Pallante was not very good. Far cry from what we saw from him in that gem he tossed in Cincinnati. He lasts just three innings, gives up six runs on six hits. He walks three, hits a dude, uh, give up a home run. Like, it was bad. It was gross. The offense even staked him to a one nothing lead. Home run by uh, Alec Burleson, but coughed that up right away in the bottom of the first inning. The offense did make a game of it later on. Uh, if you stuck around and watched it, home runs by Mason Wynn and Nolan Gorman again. That got him close, but in the end, the deficit was just too much to overcome. Fifth spot in the rotation. It's been a problem since Steven Matz went down, and we knew it was going to be a problem. It's why we urged <laughs> the front office to get one more dude, uh, but the you know, you had Matt's under contract already. You're like, all right, well, hopefully you can stay healthy this time. Didn't happen. We knew it wasn't going to happen. But I'm guessing Andre Pallante will get uh, another crack at things. We'll probably get the start on Sunday. Um, I mean, let's be honest. It's not like he he got ripped by some minuscule lineup. You know, the Astros are good. Their record is bad. But the Astros are supposed to be good. They're They're better than what their record says. I mean, you got you agree with that, right? They got plenty of ammunition in that order, even with uh, with Tucker out. So, and they didn't have Bregman in the lineup today, but you know, in that game they did. But it's not like you know it was it was some team that shouldn't be hitting opposing hitters is the one that that, that hit him well. So I'm not closing the door on Palante yet, but if I'm the Cardinals, I'm definitely browsing the trade blocks and thinking about things around the league looking for another pitcher so uh, they, they could possibly bring into the fold if they need to. So we're going to get into the trade speculation a little bit later. But um, let's get into Wednesday's game. Heading into the game, they had lost four of their last five against Philly, who's an amazing team, and just swept Milwaukee. And then they lost the first two to Houston. Game one, probably should have won that one. Game two, not so much. So you're hoping to get something out of Miles Michaelis in game three in our Lizard King delivery. All right. It, it was good to see. I'm always rooting for all of these guys. I'm never wanting to see them fail in any way, shape, or form. It's just not who I am. And Miles Michaelis showed up. He showed up in a big way. Now, the stories with Miles throughout the season has been that he's he's usually pretty darn good for his entire outing, except for one inning, right? It's always one inning that does him in. We call it Michaelis Roulette here at Locked on Cardinals because you just never know when that bad inning is just going to pop up. <laughs> you never know when it's going to go off. Uh, first game against the Dodgers, he got tagged for two in the first and three in the third. In April against the Diamondbacks, it was the fifth inning that got him. Against the Brewers, it was three in the fourth inning. In May against the Mets, six in the fifth inning. Against the Brewers, it was three in the first inning. Against the Cubs, you got three in the fourth inning. <laughs> Phillies, it was three in the second inning. You just never know. But outside of those innings, it's almost all zeros for Michaelis. It's not like he gives up one here, two there, 
another one later on. It's always like one inning that does him in. And we keep saying if he can avoid the big blow-up inning, that he's got a really good chance to win you a ball game. And on Wednesday, his bad inning was in the fifth inning. When the Cardinals were up three to nothing at the time, he gives up back-to-back solo shots to super slugger Yanir Diaz. Like, what? The dude had a home run in all three games, but only had three on the entire season before the Cardinals came into town. So Diaz, uh, a real thorn in the side of the Cardinals in that series. And then Trey Cabbage hits his first of the year. So here we go again, right? You know, you're thinking, Miles, is it, here he goes. This is where we lose the lead. He then gives up a two-out single, but he was able to get Jose Altuve to ground out to end the inning. Outside of that inning, Miles was awesome. Just two hits in the rest of the game. He strikes out three and only threw 62 pitches through six innings. The Astros were very aggressive. And Ollie pulled him and handed the ball over to the Trinity of JoJo Kitt and Helsley. It was a curious decision at the time because, you know, Miles' pitch count was so low. And, you know, you got a lot of games coming up. So not a lot of days off in the month of June for the Cardinals. But um, the lower part of the, the, the order for the Astros had put some good swings on Miles. You know, they were the ones who did the damage. It wasn't the top of the order. And that part of the order was coming around again. So it made sense to try and avoid a, a crooked number going up on the board against Michaelis and ruining what had already been a pretty good game thus far. So besides the three guys you got in the line in, in the in the bullpen back there, pretty darn good. They're pretty darn good. They've been really good for you, despite you know the tough game for Jojo Romero on uh, Monday night. You know, that that was not something we had seen yet this year. And they, they came out and they did what they normally do. They dominate in the last three innings. They allowed just one base runner. That was a walk by Kittredge, uh, the two-out walk to uh, Altuve. And they strike out four, but nothing else. No runs, no hits. Seals up the win. They wrap up their road trip at four and five, which I know it doesn't sound great, but when you're talking about the Phillies and the Astros, you you expect to not exactly just dominate for uh, the entire road trip. Offensively, the Cardinals had just five hits, but they make the most out of them. Siani had a sack fly, scoring Brandon Crawford, who had led off the uh, third inning with a double to take the lead. So it's nice to see when Wynn needs a day off that Crawford's been able to produce a little bit the last couple of times he's been out there. Uh, your second and third runs come around with two outs in the fifth inning when uh, Pedro Pajes walks, although it was a terrible call. An absolutely terrible call. He should have been punched out. That was a strike. But the Cardinals catch a break, finally. Uh, Siani bunts him over, and then Donovan laces a single to right field to score him. Then Burleson doubles into the right field corner to score Donnie. And you're getting some two-out production there. That's great. Um, by the way, is Alec Burleson the best hitter on this team? Think about it for a minute. Just think about it for a minute. Like, if you had to pick a guy in this lineup to come up, and you got the game on the line. You can't risk a strikeout. Are you picking biscuits? Are you picking biscuits right now? Because I, because I, I am. I think I am. Gorman is hot right now, and I get that. But he does strike out a ton. Would you take Burley over Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt right now? I, I think I would. I think I would. Biscuits coming in huge. Uh, speaking of Nato, after the Astros brought it back to uh, a one-run game with those solo home runs off Michaelis. Uh, Nolan Arnato answers with a with a missile of a home run to left field. Uh, hits it into the Crawford boxes and left makes it four to two, sixth home run of the year, and gave the Cardinals a little bit of breathing room. Uh, but as I mentioned, the Trinity was on top of their game, and the Cardinals get the dub, and they head back home to face uh, Nato's old team, the Colorado Rockies. Be nice to to get hot right before Colorado shows up, but uh, they just end up getting swept by the Reds in Denver. So it's not like they're playing good ball right now. So this is a chance to, to kick a team while they're down and you get to face them for four games. Austin Gomber will be pitching in one of them. He will get the start. So an Austin Gomber revenge game probably in the works, but it'd be nice to, to get that sweep and or at least take three out of four. The Cardinals are now two games under 500. So this is a great chance to finally get over that, that hump. That is the 500 mark, get over that threshold and hopefully do it for good. Uh, trade speculation is swirling around the league right now as teams are 
jockeying for position with the wild card coming into play. And you've only got a couple of months left uh, until the trade deadline hits. So um, there are starting to be a lot of rumors spun throughout Major League Baseball right now. The White Sox, obviously a, a big name to keep an eye on. They just lost again to the Cubs, blew another big lead. <laughs> they were up, what, five to one? Blew a five to nothing lead on Tuesday. Blew a five to one lead on Wednesday. Um, so they're ready. They're ready to do some business. Business, man. They put the league on notice that they are open with three big names available. So we're going to talk about them and the rumors coming up next on Locked On Cardinals. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. NBA Finals get started on Thursday. The Stanley Cup Finals getting started as well. Uh, here real soon. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and a whole lot more. Uh, you know, personal player like bets are, are they're, they're a lot of fun. All right. my I got a bunch of buddies who do, they don't bet on games anymore. Like they're, they're totally done with that. They all go, they go on to FanDuel and go with the player prop bets. Like that's what they make the money off of. And they're doing it with baseball. They're going to be doing it with basketball with the finals and the Stanley Cup finals coming around. Um, this is a chance to, to enjoy these moments and enjoy these finals even more. And of course, it always brings a little more excitement to the baseball games when you got a, a little cheddar on the line. And I'm not saying go out and put like a hundred bucks on something. I'm saying you use these little five dollar bets, man. Do these little parlays and you can win. And it makes it a, the games a whole lot more fun. I promise you that, especially games that aren't involving the Cardinals. You know, I'm, I'm not paying attention to them quite as closely as I do with the Cardinals. And you can put money on these games and they become a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and gives you another reason to watch them. So visit fanocom slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Then make that switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. Program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis. You've got opinions. You've got news. And it's streaming 24-7. So it's there no matter what your schedule is. And you can find it on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals' hometown broadcast with the Rockies coming to town uh, beginning on Thursday with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Cardinals. And thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. You can leave your comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter anytime you want. Your feedback is always welcome and encouraged. So with the recent surge, I mean, the Cardinals have been playing some good ball despite losing two of three in Philly and two of three in Houston. They've been playing very, very well. It's got them back in the hunt for a wild card spot. Uh, they are what now a game back, I believe, of the Cubs after the Cubs came back against uh, the White Sox. Yeah, so they're a game out of the wild card and uh, six games back of the Brewers, who ended up getting swept by the Phillies. So, you know, they're, they're in contention. Let's, you know, they're there. This is... This is where we expected them to be. I don't I don't think a lot of people thought they'd be at the top of the NL Central. They thought they'd be competing for wild card spots, and that's where they are. Um, so the Cardinals picked up a little bit of ground today uh, on the Brewers. And if things stay like this, which we expect them to, the Cardinals will certainly be looking to add to their roster, not trade people away. And the rumors, they're already swirling about certain teams and who they're going to be willing to move. Uh, one of those teams, obviously, is going to be the Chicago White Sox. We brought these guys up before, but now we're starting to get word that um, this full rebuild is a going to have them where they're going to be putting pretty much everybody on the block. Like, they're, they're all available. Per MLB.com, the biggest name on offer, figures to go for Garrett Crochet, or as he's known as the crotch rocket <laughs> among people. He's only 24 years old, left-hander, controllable through 2026, a lot of strikeouts. He's got a lot going for him. In his first season as a starter, he's registered a 3.49 ERA. He's got an AL leading 93K so far and 15 walks. That's it. 
over 69 and two thirds innings. Uh, per Dennis Lynn and Ken Rosenthal, the athletic crochet may already have a primary suitor in the form of the Padres because, of course, the Padres are going to trade with anybody and everybody. Like they don't care about prospects at all, man. They just ship them out. Um, they've lost you, Darvish, to a left growing strain, Joe Musgrove, right elbow inflammation. Uh, those are some injuries they've dealt with already this week. So another team willing to make a deal. They went out and got Luis Arise already. So uh, they're going to be somebody. We know how the Padres like to just whatever. What, what do you want? We'll give them to you. We'll just trade up anybody. Uh, according to ESPN's Jeff Passan, Chicago has no untouchables in trade talks. The team is also willing to move star center fielder Luis Robert Jr., who just came back from the injured list. And we mentioned Eric Fetty the uh, the last time we talked about trade rumors. Uh, Luis Robert, like Crochet, probably going to fetch a solid haul. He's only 26. He signed through 2025 with team options in 27 and 26. And when he's healthy, he's been really, really good just a year ago. 38 home runs, 20 steals, 857 OPS, while recording a plus eight outs above average in center field. Uh, he's missed most of 2024 because of the hip flexor strain which has been the latest in a long line of injuries for him. But um, he just came back Tuesday, hit a home run in that game against the Cubs, was 0-4 on uh, Wednesday. But he's a guy that's very enticing, right? Uh, Eric Fetty, the 31-year-old, signed a two-year $15 million deal in the offseason after going over and playing in Korea and rejuvenating his career. He's got a 3.12 ERA, 66 strikeouts, 22 walks, and 69 in the third innings. Uh, their closer, who gave up the home run on Wednesday night to the Cubs to lose the game. Uh, hard thrower, though, Michael Kopech, controllable through 2025. Tommy Pham, our old friend, signed to a one-year deal. Shortstop Paul DeYoung hit another home run for the White Sox on Wednesday. He's got 10 of them on the year, among other White Sox players who could be dealt. Now, Cardinals aren't going to have any interest in bringing Paul DeYoung back, barring any you know injuries to what's going on with Wynn and Crawford, so I'm not worried about that. Tommy Pham's a name we've brought up. Would Mo be willing, though? I mean, those, you know, those aren't the sexy names, obviously, Pham and DeYoung, but would Mo be willing to trade some of the prospects that he, he just landed last year to make a move to bring in some of the top shelf talent? You know, Crochet. Luis Robert Jr. You know, history says no. He's more apt to make the more conservative and cautious moves. You know, that's kind of his approach to the trade deadline. He doesn't go all in. He doesn't push all his chips in. He always leaves a little bit back here because he doesn't want to empty the cupboard for just one season, make a run, and then if it falls short, you're screwed and you're starting over again. But you never know, right? Right? <laughs> but Luis Robert Jr., obviously, he'd been hurt. He's a guy the Cardinals got outbid on by the White Sox when he signed back in the day with Chicago. Uh, Cardinals caught some hell for that because people were like, this is a, a guy who could be a generational talent with the, the, the amount of tools that he has. Uh, when he's healthy, you've seen him. You know, the Cardinals still supposedly have Edmund coming back. Newt's on the men for a while. Jordan Walker still there, but in Memphis. Uh, Burleson, Siani, and Carlson are also here. Uh, Burley could be your first baseman of the future. When Goldie is done, you could scooch him down to first base. So that would open up a, a bit of a spot there. But realistically, are they going to go after Luis Robert Jr.? Probably not. But it's fun to talk about right now. Uh, there's also been some talk about the Marlins' Jesus Lazardo being available. Again, MLB.com is talking about this one. Um, let's get a picture of them up there. There you go. It is Lazardo Again, MLB.com here. Uh, according to ESPN's Jeff Pass, and the Marlins are expected to trade away at least one starting pitcher. While Braxton Garrett, Ryan Weathers, Trevor Rogers, and Edward Cabrera could all draw interest, none is as valuable as Jesus Lazardo from a trade standpoint. Lazardo owns an unremarkable 4.18 ERA this season, but has flashed ace stuff in his career. He notched a 10.3 Ks per nine and a 3.57 Ks per walk ratio with a 3.59 ERA. Since the beginning of 2022, he's still only 26 years old. He's controllable through 2026. This is the kind of guy that Cardinals fans want. Would be huge, right? Finally, somebody else to go along with. You're number one in Sonny Gray. But other teams have seen him <laughs> be good too. 
And uh, especially when last year, remember Miami was really, really good. They went to the playoffs. Skip Schumacher, manager of the year. This year has been a lot different. It won't be cheap, that's for sure. And again, a lot of people will be interested in Jesus Lazardo. It's why I think that, you know, I've, I've I've seen what Mo and the Cardinals do over the years, and it's they don't make the big splash of the deadline normally. Normally, there's been some cases in the past where they've gone and gotten a bigger name. Um, Matt Holiday comes to mind. They made a trade for Scott Rowland back in the day. Um, but it's why fighting a, a veteran type of guy would be a more cardinal thing to do because they just – honestly, they just don't have the prospects to to flip for guys. You know, the Padres – are doing what the Padres do, and they'll flip all their prospects. I don't care. But the Cardinals have just kind of started to refill the cupboard of prospects in their organization, and it just I, I just find it it would be shocking to me if they gave up guys like a Team Kents or um, you know a Thomas a JC or I don't know who else do you want to say is our any of these guys that you know are, are, are having good seasons so far. Um, it just would shock me if they flipped them. And Tink Hintz, I haven't seen an update yet, but he left Wednesday's game after just 35 pitches, so we're hoping it's nothing major. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that one because that's big news. Nothing has been announced that I've seen, but uh, there was a photo of him walking to the clubhouse with the trainer after two innings for Springfield. One run, two hits, had struck out three. Um, we hope it's nothing major. Hopefully it's it's not, but uh, when we get confirmation, we'll let you know, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that one for you. But speaking of injuries, we got some good news on Steven Matz. We got some bad news on Keenan Middleton, though, too. So we're going to run down through the entire IL for you next here on Locked on Cardinals and get you the latest updates. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances, not just to get by peak performances. We're talking superchargers. We're talking roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and a whole lot more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Now that summer's here, you're going to want to take it to the car wash. You want to make it look so nice for everybody to see, right? In the sunshine and the beauty that is St. Louis. Well, Got to make sure it's running well to do that. So with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, the part, it's guaranteed to fit your ride each and every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. That's ebay.com slash motors. I I, I I regress. I said it wrong. eBay.com slash motors. That's where you need to go. eBay guaranteed fit. Again, only available in you to us customers, eligible items, only exclusions apply. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app, Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7. And it's covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows, which cover every league. You can find Locked on Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So let's start with the bad news. Unfortunately, Keenan Middleton, man. Keenan Middleton. We hardly knew you, bro. Hardly knew you. Middleton, who has not pitched for the Cardinals after signing with St. Louis in the offseason, will have season-ending flexor repair surgery. So this is not Tommy John. It is flexor repair surgery on the forearm. And uh, that sucks. Middleton met with a specialist on Monday after undergoing an MRI on the flexor tendon in his right forearm last week. There was some hope not that long ago that he was going to be back this year. Several weeks of rehabilitating and strengthening the right forearm Made five appearances and compiled a 2.25 ERA for Double A Springfield, but then the pain returned to his forearm following appearances on May 22nd and 23rd. Uh, according to manager Ali Marmel, in order to have him uh, have for him to have any shot at being ready for 2025, this was the best option to get surgery now. So his season is over. 30 years old, never pitched for the Cardinals this year after signing that one-year deal. There is a club option for 2025. So. 
if the Cardinals want to want to bring him back and give him a, a chance to actually play in a Cardinals uniform, they they could activate that option. They could exercise that option, which I, they probably will do. I mean, if I'm if I'm guessing, I think they probably do it. I think they're they're willing to to give him another chance, and uh, hopefully he'll be back. Uh, in 2020, oh gosh, it's weird to say that in 2025, uh, Steven Matz, better news on Steven Matz. All right. So the latest with Steven will begin a rehabilitation assignment on Thursday with triple a Memphis scheduled to throw two to three innings, 40 to 45 pitches. According to Ollie, he's been out since May 3rd, lower back strain, felt some lingering pain after a mound session at Bush on May 10th, shut down for a bit so he could receive treatment. Last pitch for the Cardinals on April 30th while battling back stiffness and pain. He surrendered four earned runs over three and a third innings. You could just tell something was up. He did not look himself. And according to Derek Gould at stltoday.com, he's been able to successfully complete two high-intensity bullpen sessions. He maintained his velocity and recovered without soreness or weakness. That standard schedule for a starter on a rehab assignment is to increase the pitch count by 15 every time he goes out which means Matt's will be ready to throw around 90 pitches by mid-June. So it's not like he's going to just be back in a week or something, but he's on his way. He's on his way. Uh, relievers Riley O'Brien and Nick Robertson are making strides as well. According to Derek Gould, again, stltoday.com, O'Brien, who had the forearm flexor strain, um, and we were so excited about him in the offseason. Remember, you got him from Seattle, and he's having this great spring, and he looks so good. Pitches against the Dodgers, and then gone. Uh, he's thrown three bullpen sessions, according to Gould, and is nearing a rehab assignment with a minor league affiliate. Robertson is dealing with shoulder inflammation. He started a throwing program. Giovanni Gallegos, remember him? Trying to make his way back. Uh, was good in his first rehab assignment outing with uh, Memphis on Friday the 31st, and then Tuesday, not good. Two runs, three hits, two of those hits. You guessed it, home runs off of Geo in one inning of work. So take your time, Geo. Take your time. We're no rush. No rush at all. <laughs> okay. Take your time. Get right before you come back. All right. Don't don't press. Uh, Rockies are coming to Bush Stadium for the next four games. Uh, gonna be doing a crossover episode with Locked on Rockies host Paul Holden for you in our next episode. We'll talk some uh, Nolan Arenado. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on with the Rockies, why the Rockies, you know, as bad as their record has been. Again, they just got swept by the Reds in Colorado. They gave up six runs in the ninth inning to blow that lead and uh, lose the last game to Cincinnati. Uh, why? They would make me nervous at all. You know, um, there's there's something about them that I'm like, oh, no. And we'll get into it with Paul Holden uh, in uh, the next episode. So I encourage you guys to uh, be on the lookout for that one because that will be posted as well here very, very soon. So thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. I'm sorry this one came out so late. We had to work. There's a, there's multiple jobs going on here, boys and girls. And so uh, Locked on Cardinals, I had to wait till the night to, to record it. So uh, here we are. And I apologize for it getting out so late. But uh, you'll have this episode and the next one ready to rock and roll. Uh, for you uh, on Thursday. So if you haven't already, give me a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals at, at JD Sports Radio. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and our love for the Cardinals grow as we make that push for 10,000 subscribers. You guys are the best fans of baseball for a reason. I'll see you next time, along with my man, Paul Holden, on Locked on Cardinals. We'll see you then.